Herzlich willkommen. Welcome to episode 4 of our information series, Basics of Electrostatics. With this information series, we want to share our knowledge of electrostatics with you to make electrostatic applications safer. Yeah, und heute haben wir That's right. And today we've prepared something exciting again. Last time we said that we're going to look at what the needle tip in combination with the ionic wind is all about. And we're going to get started on that right away with a really great experiment. Okay. I have prepared a candle, a lighter, and we have our mini flocker here. The mini flocker it's a high voltage generator, or rather a handheld high voltage generator. Here's the on off button, and I want you to operate it later. Great. You can try to blow out the candle when we light it up, but only using the ion wind. Uh, I thought with the mouth. No, just with the ion wind, please. Wow, it works. Not bad, isn't it? So you can notice that an ion wind is happening here. So even if I turn it on now and you put your hand here, you can really feel the ion wind. And you can see it here impressively. I'll do it again. How you can really play with the can light here with the ion wind. And if I get closer, then I can blow out the entire candle here. Just with the ion wind. Wow. So now you might be wondering what this ion wind actually is and what is happening. This is a high voltage generator that has negative polarity, which means we are generating an excess of electrons here at the tip of the needle. Electron excess always means negative charge, because if we look at an atom, then we have the protons and the neutrons in the atomic nucleus. The neutrons are neutral and the protons are positively charged and outside there are free moving electrons which are negative and if it has the same number of protons as electrons it is neutral and if it has an electron excess so more electrons then it is negatively charged if I have an electron deficiency then the protons in the nucleus predominate and then it is positively charged so back to our high voltage we have negative charge at the tip of the needle. And this negative charge, or this excess of electrons, charges all the air molecules here around this tip of the needle. And in the experiment with the inclined plane, we saw that same name charged particles repel each other. And that means at the point, the same named negatively charged ions. So an air molecule that is charged is called an ion and it is getting pushed away by the same name charge. Also quite impressive is the ion wind with such an ion wheel. And it is nothing else like a trident, which is mounted on a needle tip. The needle point serves as a bearing. And if I now apply high voltage, then this wheel starts to rotate and indeed quite fast as you can see. And in principle, the ion drive in space works in exactly the same way you've probably already heard. Yes. That satellites in space are also moved with ion wind. In space, we only have one problem. We have no air. That means one can't ionize air. That's why such an ion drive works with a noble gas. That means that this satellite must also have the gas available. And then this noble gas is charged and is repelled, and thereby it produces a recoil. So, I hope that was instructive and interesting so far. And hopefully you had fun. Okay, Olaf, thank you very much. I learned something again. I hope it was also interesting for you. We will continue to produce videos in our series with information worth knowing about the basics of electrostatics. Exactly. And next time we'll look at how the Scion transport works even over further distances in air. And what happens when you have a Faraday cage. Okay, I'm curious about that. I've heard that before in school at some point but I don't remember.
so I am very curious. Hopefully you'll stay tuned. Until the next video.